You have just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, it's red hot and ready. And today we're heading down south to the land of the gauchos, those Argentinian cowboys. We're gonna be catching some beef, we're gonna be chopping it up, skewering it up, and hitting it with a little bit of fire. That's right, and if you've got a hunger for the hooves, we're gonna be beefing it up in the backyard. Today we're gonna to be talking about different kinds of beef from around the globe. And also, we're gonna be making chimichurri. That's right, chimichurri, kids. So come on back, and we're gonna be doing the chimichurri. Argentinian beef, huh? What do you want to say about Argentinian beef? There's no law preventing it besides badges. We don't need no stinking badges, right? Okay, today we're playing with a little bit of Argentinian beef. This is a fantastic product. What we're gonna do with this, we're gonna break this down. This is what we call the tops butt, or the sirloin butt. It's the edge of the sirloin, which is right off here, going down to the butt, which is why the word butt is included in the name of this meat. We're gonna take this down, we're going to be chopping it up, skewering it up gaucho style, which is just big chunks of meat thrown over a fire, and we're gonna have a fantastic sauce on top called chimichurri. It's like an Argentinian salsa, not super hot, but fiery enough to make you feel like you had something tomorrow, okay? Today, tomorrow, you know what I'm saying. But we'd also like to make a fantastic little, uh, little dessert for you. It's easy as pie, although it isn't pie. We got some boiling water here. We got some sweetened condensed milk. This is called dolce leche, sweet milk, okay? Simple as that. We're gonna let this sit in here for about six hours, okay? So while you're doing that, you can do anything you want. You can wash your car, you can wash the dog, you can wash your wife, she can wash you, she can wash the dog and you and the wife. Okay, it doesn't matter. Fill your six hours with something productive because you wanna be able to deserve what you're gonna have for dessert, okay? So I'm just gonna uh, read the guide to essential food hygiene while this is cooking down and uh, I'll uh, point out some of the points that uh, need to be pointed out. Highly recommended. Okay, so we're gonna let this stuff sit in the pot for at least six hours. Not four hours, but six hours, okay? And when we come back, it's gonna be reduced down to a beautiful caramely consistency. So meanwhile, I'm gonna throw this puppy back, see if I can catch myself a bigger piece, and I'll catch in the backyard. It's late, it's dark, you're drunk, and you're looking for some cows. Nope, you're not lonely, you and the boys are cow tipping. Now cows from around the world have had to put up with this since the beginning of time, but it's a pretty small price to pay when you look at the alternatives. Today we've got Jeff Clark here with us from Eastern Meat, and we're talking about beef from around the world. Three, four. We're back. This is uh, Graham Caballero back here, Cracker Caballero, known to his friends, okay? What we're doing, we're breaking down our beef today to make our skewers. This, my friend, is a beef top butt. Okay, I'm just gonna break this puppy down, get right into the skewers, okay? Notice it's in a couple pieces of meat here. This is the cap, right along here. We're gonna separate that in gaucho manner with our bare hands. The cap is great, because later on we can remove the fat off that and we can slice it up and make ourselves a nice steak sandwich. Okay. It's okay, we have to trim this off here. This fat isn't terribly tough. It's gonna flavor the meat, but there is some sinew in it. You'll always find some of this. Take a look at that, it's like, it's like leather almost. It's like very unappetizing. Let's cut a piece right off here and get going. The muscle separates right here. So that is the most logical place to cut. We're gonna cut this into about one inch cubes, okay? So slice it straight down here. Now I got more manageable pieces, straight down, across, across, and across again. That's great. We got two different kinds of skewers happening today. We got our basic single skewer. This works great. This is more traditional, and I'll show you one of those. Very easy. Just pop it straight on. But the problem with this is once it gets juiced up on the grill, you pick it up, you turn it, and your meat stays in the same place, see? 
So these people have come up with a double skewer. This is, this is a very, uh, very handy little thing. But both through, like so. We'll fill this one up here. So watch what happens when you turn this. No problem. So flipping your meat has never been simpler, okay? Get this out of the way. We're gonna make a topping for this. This is a very traditional Argentinian topping. It's basically a salsa slash vinaigrette. It's called chimichurri. Okay, so we got one onion. That's chopped fairly finely, okay? You got about four tablespoons of parsley. You got some garlic there. That's what four cloves of garlic, finely chopped. You got some fresh oregano here, a tablespoon and a half or so. Some red pepper. This is basically for color. It, it adds the flavor too, but it's gonna make it a nice, vibrant red and green sort of color. We got some red wine vinegar, that's about a quarter cup. And we got some extra virgin olive oil. Pop this off. I'm gonna put about half a cup to a cup in there. Whatever looks good, do it to see your taste. Give it a stir. That's looking good. A little bit of salt. This is sea salt we're using because it's much finer flavor than iodized salt. Stay away from that, you don't need any more iodine in your diet, do you? Black pepper, lots of black pepper. Lots of this stuff. Okay, that's the way it should be. Come on up, give this a smell, huh? Mmm, Dean, what do you think about that? Good. That's all right, huh? You'll be having it with your uh, floor tenderized beef little later on for lunch. Okay, the other thing we want to make here, we're just gonna do barbecue potatoes, gaucho style, which is basically unblanched potatoes, just straight potatoes, straight raw potatoes, cut into about half inch pieces, Toss them into a bowl, a little parsley, a little salt. Be liberal with the salt when you're seasoning before the grill. Afterwards, you don't want to use much salt. If you season properly, before it actually goes on the grill, you can have plenty of flavor. You will never need to use a salt shaker again at the table. Okay, a little bit of pepper. We're going to add some oil to this. Doesn't matter what kind of oil you use, extra virgin olive oil, vegetable oil, castor oil, cod liver oil, motor oil if you want. I recommend the vegetable or the olive oil. Let's give it a little toss here. And these are gonna go straight up to the grill. Speaking of the grill, Graham, Cracker Boy, let's have some grilling music. We're back with Jeff Clark from Eastern Meats and we're talking international beef. Tell us about a couple different breeds, Jeff. Well, actually, some of the most popular breeds in the world are, of course, we all heard of Angus type cattle. Uh, the Samothals, the uh, Charolais out of France, and uh, the Wagyu's out of uh, Australia. Right, so Angus beef is from Scotland, right? Angus beef is traditionally uh, Scottish, yes. It's made its way into North America because of our great grazing lands of uh, feed. So that's what's most popular? Well, yeah, because it grows quickly. And that's, you know, farmers are trying to turn over cattle very quick, so it grows quick and gets so, to market. So it's really flavorful because of the marbling, and the marbling is actually the white little specks you see in here, which is the fat content in the meat. Yes. Hey, who are you calling fat? Well, what I think is the most interesting one is the Colby. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, Colby is actually a brand of beef, which comes from the Wagyu uh, breed, uh, imported out of Australia. And uh, the Japanese really took a liking to this and, and actually did their own little brand and with some specifications involved. Okay. And they are treated a lot like most of you boys would love to be treated. <laughs> I hear they're injected with beer and massaged their whole life. Is that true? Well, not quite injected with beer. What happens during the summer months is the, uh, the cattle actually get hot and don't feel like eating. So they stimulate their appetites with uh, beer. Hey, I'm a small cow. Can I get a beer over here? So they want to get some nice big beer bellies. That's on. right. And as far as the massaging goes, they're not uh, massaged to make the meat tender, as most people would think. They're actually massaged to keep the cattle nice and calm, so they have a great life. Yeah, some life. I'm going to grow up to be a steak. So in effect, though, they are more tender because the, the massage calms them down, so they That's move right. around less. Exactly. All right, well, stick around, boys, because when we come back, we are up to our necks in beef. We're smoking it, chopping it, slashing it, and grilling here on Red Hot Ready. It's a virtual beef fest here today on Red Hot and Ready. Um, I'm wondering about the grading of beef. Well, Canada's grading system is actually rated uh, by the alphabet. So Canada Grade A uh, is actually a, a very good grade of beef. It actually goes A, AA, AA, AAA uh, being 
the most marble, okay. which we've all talked about and which we were most interested in because of the flavor of the beef. Double A has a little less than A, a little less than that. Okay. So what are we likely to see at our grocery stores? You're guaranteed pretty much to see an A product. Hey, I got an A, I got an A. Uh, double A and triple A as well. Okay, and what characterizes triple A? A lot of marbling? A lot of marbling and uh, you know, this would definitely classify as a uh, triple A. Okay, and I think another big thing on people's minds is the safety of beef. Hey kid, uh, you want some candy? We hear a lot in the news about beef scares like mad cow disease or hoof and mouth. Well, the Canadian Grading is, uh, Association actually has a, uh, the highest grade probably in, in the world. We don't allow imported beef that hasn't been inspected properly over the years. Uh, we very careful at introducing breeds. So actually Canada has actually the, probably the safest in the world, I would think. Woohoo! All right, boys, you've heard it here. Don't go veggie on us yet because your beef is safe with us. A one, two, three. I met a little girl out on the plane. This be my life going down the drain. Don't worry. I got protection. She said, come on now. How come you can't look me in the eye? I said, come on, baby. What's between that? Don't worry. I got my cornbread. That's right, guys, we're cooking cornbread here, Argentinian cornbread at the grill. And uh, the thing about this is that there's lots of corn in it, so we're gonna get straight into it, okay? We're gonna remove the protection off our <gasps> corn here. This is uh, peaches and cream corn, which uh, is called that because it has the white and the yellow in it, okay? First thing we have to do is we have to shave our niblets, okay? Guys, we all know how to do that. Every now and then you gotta shave a little niblet, don't you? Run your knife down the stalk of the corn, the cob, and there's your niblets. Easy as that, man. What we have to do when making biscuits like this is we got to uh, mix our dry ingredients together first, okay? Which is a cup and a half of flour here. Got a cup of cornmeal. And we got some butter, about six tablespoons of butter to be specific, okay? And just like you're making pie, pie crust, that is. You just want to work your butter into your dry ingredients like this. Just move it around. What you're looking for is actually kind of a soft pastry feel. If you get in there, Robert, check it out. See? It's getting kind of coarse. It's still soft, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not as fine as it was when you first put it in, okay? That's great. To this, we're going to add a little bit of baking powder. Straight in. Okay, that's about a tablespoon. Got about a teaspoon of salt. And we got about a tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons of sugar, okay? Mix that around as well with your butter. This is gonna make it a lot easier. When you add your wet ingredients to it, things aren't gonna be clumping up. Speaking about wet ingredients, this is about just under a cup of buttermilk. Add a little bit in, dump the rest in. Work it until it's a fine kind of pasty dough consistency. To this now, we're going to add our corn niblets. These are going to be great, by the way. Okay, we got our corn niblets in here. We're getting these kneaded in nicely. This only takes a second, right? So we have a nice sort of dough happening here. Throw it straight on the bench. At this point, it's probably a wise idea to wash your hands. Yeah? Wash my hands. Okay. Got a little bit of extra flour here. This is what we need when we roll this out on the board. Let's clear this off a bit. A little flour on the surface. Throw a dough down. Get it nicely covered. There we are. Floury dough, guys. <coughs> this is what it's all about. Grab our pin. Roll it out to about an inch thick. I guess that's about an inch. <laughs> Slice it up. Take each one of these puppies here. We're gonna form it into its own little patty, okay? Into a biscuit shape. 
Out in the range, we don't have any uh, cutting implements like a cookie cutter, so we're just gonna do it with our hands, right? It's easier this way anyway. Leave the cutters at mom's place, right? Okay, got that, Robert? That looks good, doesn't it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, of course it does. Okay, so we got six biscuits. We got a cast iron pan on the grill. And we're not gonna add any oil to this. We don't need to do that. We're gonna put it at a medium heat. Pretend it was a fire, you know, it's on the old coals. Now, toss a corn meal in, the same stuff that actually went into the biscuits. And this is gonna shield the biscuit actually from the heat. Throw them right on top of here. And this is just gonna take a little while, you know. Half an hour, these should be pumping. Okay, we got that going. Why don't we turn the potatoes over, see what we got. Getting some nice grill marks here. We want to cook these in medium heat because we haven't par cooked them earlier. So it's going to take a little longer to cook because they're coming from a straight, raw state. My friend, this is the true essence of the gaucho. The roping, the riding, the range. And the biscuits. You did what to my horse? <laughs> Never touch my sister again. <laughs> yeah, we're back and we're making the spuds. These things are there, okay? I'm gonna take these off and we're getting straight to the heart of the matter, okay? That is the beef. That is gaucho beef we're doing up. We got our skewers here, both varieties. Gaucho, North American. North American gaucho, we got it. Straight on the grill. Need to season this up. A true gaucho probably wouldn't have this kind of implement with him, but we're city gauchos, right? Little yeah, cracked black pepper. We're gonna brush the other side with a little bit more olive oil. There we are. I think our biscuits are happening too, so we're gonna try them. Cracker, open up, take a bite there. There we are. Ah. Perfect. Mm. That good? Yeah. Okay, sing us a song. Cracker likes his biscuits. We're going on to our dessert, which is grilled pears with dolce de leche. Okay? Gonna cut our pears in half here and quickly remove the cores. I used to have a problem with this because I used to fight for the cores. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the village people. Just oil them up here. Nothing like greasing up a good pear, huh? Eh? Straight on the grill. I'm gonna shut this down. I think it's about time we check out our dolce de leche. So, wait, what's that? That's right, a little bit of gaucho cooking magic there, folks. These things look good enough to eat, right? They're coming straight off. Beautiful. Check this out, Robert. Beautiful, medium rare. Mmm. You can tell that. You know how you tell medium rare? Grab your thumb like this. Like this. Put your thumb together and leave it half loose. The feel right in there, that's what medium rare is. Just right. Okay, let's load these up in the chuck wagon. Here we go. And our pears are now ready as well. Slide them onto a plate. Beautifully caramelized, all the natural sugars come out. Got nice and brown. These pears are gonna be sweet, baby. Okay. You're probably wondering about our dolce de leche, huh? Let's check this stuff out. Be very careful. Make sure that the can has cooled down. When you're doing this, you have to make sure that it's also completely submerged in water for the entire six hours. If your water boils down, there's a good chance your can will explode. You don't want that shrapnel everywhere, sticky, gooey mess. Cleaning up might be interesting, but uh, getting in the way of it might hurt. Okay. Check this out. This is amazing. Dolce de leche, everybody. Pudding. Normally this would be a little bit softer, runnier. But hey, we're gauchos, right? We adapt. We adapt in these kind of conditions. Oh, cracker. There you are. Mm. 
And think, we're making bean salad, right? This is what we're having for lunch, okay? We got two cups of beans. We got a quarter cup of chopped parsley. We got a bunch of olives. We got two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. That was red wine vinegar. One tomato, seeded and chopped. We got four tables, or pardon me, four cloves of garlic, minced. Toss them in there. A little extra virgin olive oil. That's about half a cup going in there. Some salt, say about half a tablespoon. A teaspoon and a half, two te teaspoons maybe, roughly the same equivalent. Toss it up with your fingers. Take a bite. Hey, cracker, try this. There you go. The crock pepper. How was that? Good. Good. See. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're about ready to start dinner. So I'm gonna go get changed for dinner, and I'll be back momentarily with the lovely Melissa. Here we are, back at the range. Am I dreaming, or are we magically transported to Argentina? Well, I am Argentinian. <laughs> well, show me what you've got here, then, cowboy. Well, cowgirl, we got a little bit of the beef. This is a traditional Argentinian gaucho beef shish kebab thrown on the fire. Okay. Very plain, a little salt and pepper. We got our beautiful cornmeal biscuits. We got our dolce de leche with some grilled pears. This is very good. If you want, you can throw a little of that, um, the toppings on. We got some sliced up dried apricots, some slivered almonds. Mm. And okay, tell me about the salads. Well, this is a bean salad. This is a bean salad with cannellini beans. Tomatoes, olives, mm. olive oil, it's looks beautiful. Looks great, looks and great. And this, my dear, is the chimichurri. You gotta try this. I thought chimichurri was wrapped in a flour tortilla. Oh no, that's chimichanga. <laughs> Which is a whole different kettle of fish. That looks great. And that's traditionally supposed to be paired with beef. Yeah, that's right. This, this, is, um, this is beef salsa. Would you like to try this? Sure. Mmm, now that is good. Thank you. Do you know why, cowboy? Why is that, cowgirl? Well, Argentinian cowboys actually, well, they obviously have a lot of meat on their hands, so they're able to be really creative with their beef. You know why that is? These guys are red hot and ready. The home of smoking good eats. 